Hello and welcome to your monthly circus scoop. I am Catherine Kavanagh of thecircusdiaries.com and this week we are not the only ones shouting about circus. The stage newspaper, that's the Performing Arts Industry News, has produced its first ever circus special issue and you flick through you'll find interviews, find articles and maybe even a couple by yours truly. Uh, I got to visit Blackpool Tower and I talked to Mr Lodzi Andres Senior about running the Blackpool Tower Circus with his family for over 25 years. I also visited France and I spoke to Racehorse Company from Finland and they are now on tour in the UK with Super Sunday, their show that got five stars when it premiered at the Roundhouse last year. Uh, the links are all in the about box so if there are any shows or companies that we talk about and you want to find out more just click on through. Uh, also touring around UK theatres this May is a new multi-art form extravaganza from director Mark Murphy called Out of This World and it bills itself as having groundbreaking aerial choreography so if you do see the show let us know if it lives up to that claim. There is also a new theatrical adaptation of Fellini's classic circus film La Strada. Uh, as far as I understand, it doesn't have any full-on circus performance, but it is based on the aesthetic of the movie, um, so I think it's going to be one that will be enjoyed by fans. Um, James Thierry, who is... Um, famous circus experimentor um, and his company Hanaton are back in the UK with The Toad New which uh, what was great success in Edinburgh last year. <clears throat> a theatrical wonder that builds on company reputation for exquisite spectacle, James Thierry has genius of both skill and imagination and The Toad New is a beautiful and precisely crafted surreality. And if you were looking for something completely different, there is the all-male variety troupe going by the name of Forbidden Knights, who are putting a bit of circus to their spicy, saucy uh, cabaret acts. Um, we will let you know how that goes if we catch up with it. They are touring to England and Northern Ireland, and also this um, magically vanished landmass, otherwise known as the Republic of Ireland. <laughs> Um, if we start our British tenting tour over in the Northern Ireland, then we've got Tom Duffy's Circus this month, who are not touring all over different parts of Northern Ireland. Um, in the Channel Islands, they are going to be seeing Gandhi's Thrill Circus uh, up in Shetland Isles. Let Circus are still doing their tour. And if we come down to the mainland, inspired by the elephant ballets of circus past, we have got our own little tenting ballet for you to enjoy. list every single tenting circus this month. We're including a link to our permanent page of British Circus websites and that will also include those companies who didn't have their dates published in time to get onto the map this month. New to the picture we are adding Circus Jeanette who actually opened at Easter and they are beginning May at Highworth near Swindon and also opening on the 12th of May is Gifford's Circus with their new show, Any Port in a Storm, which will then be travelling around the Cotswolds for the rest of the month before moving on. If we go back under bricks, then the hands down winner of the best circus venue programming for this month has to be the Lowry in Salford. They have got three of the shows we've already mentioned coming to them uh, Super Sunday, The Strada, and The Toad New. And they have also got a ringside from Ellie Dubois, which is a solo trapeze performance for one audience member at a time. I've seen it twice already, and if Manchester was a little bit closer, I would be going again, so that is recommended if you're nearby. Down in Bristol, uh, Circo Media 
are showing the work of their foundation degree students from the 10th and 11th and then their BTEC students are on show from the 18th to the 20th. In Brighton it is fringe season and Brighton Fringe <coughs> has got a big list so I'm going to read out the list. <coughs> Uh, right, yes, companies appearing at Brighton Fringe include Head First Acrobats with Elixir and also Are We There Yet? Are. There's Swiss Aerial Rope Artists, there is a Spanish Multi Skilled Clown Duo, there is Urban Stunt Circus, and a Big Top courtesy of Jerry Cottle's Wow Circus and they're also hosting guest appearances from Circus of Horrors down there for a couple of nights during the Fringe. Now, Fringe has long been a home for circus cabarets and, and shows, but the main festival itself has also been getting in on the act recently and this year Brighton Festival uh, is hosting Depart, which is the latest import from Australian company Circa has been created with graduating students from the National Centre for Circus Arts. It is a site responsive piece performing in graveyards and although there has been a little controversy over how acceptable it is to put on entertainment in people's final resting places, the shows have sold out in Hull and I think in Brighton they're sold out now as well so oh, just have a quick look and if you can catch tickets it will be an interesting one. Um, I'm not sure whether Australian company Cassus are appearing at Brighton Festival because according to the internet they are double booked between Brighton Festival and the Underbelly Festival in London but I'm sure one or other of those venues will let you see their production Driftwood later this month. The five performers float and tumble over each other and Driftwood has so many gems in the sweeping flow of movements that its ebbs are minor indeed. Music choices, minimalist vintage inspired aesthetic and a slight haze that pervades everything create a gorgeous space for Cassus to showcase their acrobatic talents. Thank you. And so on to the capital. Uh, immersive Cabaret Experience Hoops and Loops will be playing just for one night only at Wandsworth Fringe on the 11th of May. The 11th of May is also a date where the company of Soho, which is a new circus theatre production at Sadler's Wells, will be doing a question and answer session after the show. Um, otherwise, you can catch the show itself with no Q&A any time between the 6th and the 20th. I am hoping to get to Jackson's Lane on either the 24th or the 25th to see Coppelia, which is a um, second production from the brand new theatre company Feathers of Daedalus. I saw them at Edinburgh Fringe last year with a really strong debut adaptation of Alice in Wonderland, so I'm very keen to see what they do with this uh, classical ballet tale. One event that I will sadly be missing is Pirates of Saleh. It's a premiere for England of a documentary film that covers young people in Morocco finding personal freedom and creative freedom through the country's first professional circus company. And that's on the 17th at Curzon Cinema and that also includes a question and answer session with the director afterwards. You can keep up to date with all our reviews and updates um, on circusdiaries.com or by signing up to get the updates directly to your inbox. Last month we spent three days at Canvas which is an industry networking and showcase event. Over 70 productions were introduced um, to an audience of more than 100 uh, promoters and bookers and producers um, who, who came to see what was on offer. The Circus Theatre production of Romeo and Juliet from Oh My Days didn't quite live up to my hopes and expectations. They're doing amazing work with uh, developing vocal technique and using classical text with aerial disciplines. Mm, the aerial isn't always fully integrated into the storytelling, um, but it's very 
interesting production, uh, Promenade, Romeo and Juliet is still worth seeing, definitely. Um, they're still at the Millennium Centre in Wales, in Cardiff, um, for a few more days. Um, and I've been reading Big Top Typewriter, which is the latest book from American circus critic David Lewis Hammerstrom. He is a bit like me, really. He uh, combines his circus passion with a writing career. And so this is a twist on the classical circus autobiography because he takes us through uh, not only his fandom and working for circus, but also how that ties in with his writing trajectory. So he was a press agent, he's been a critic, he's been an unpaid critic and a paid critic, and he's written books on the subject. So you get an insight to the world of publication um, as well as the interviews and uh, behind the scenes information about the circus companies that he's worked with in the US and Russia. Um, you say you can get it all if you remember to subscribe. And that's all from me for this month, so please have a happy May, and if you have any feedback, as ever, do let us know. Thank you. Bye.